I take advantage of the fact that architects aren't really educated very well in the practice of business. Uh, schools don't teach us how to run a business. They teach us how to design. And that's why you have a lot of issues with uh, negotiation and just practice management in general. And I think that having a franchise set up, that kind of takes care of that and um, allows architects to focus on construction and design. Episode 157. This is The Business of Architecture. Welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show for ambitious architects where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. To download your free four-part architect profit map, visit freearchitectgift.com. Today, we're going to speak with architect Victor Caban Diaz about his new firm that he's planning on starting in the architect as developer business model. Hey, Victor, welcome to Business of Architecture. Glad to be here. So, Victor, give us some background. Tell our audience about yourself. Uh, I'm an architect down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I sit on the board of the American Institute of Architects, and I currently work for a, a company called Styles, which is a large developer uh, in the uh, South Florida area. And um, right now I'm kind of in the, uh, the transition point, I'm ready to break off on my own. And, uh, you know, and that's why I'm setting up this business plan. And I've been uh, uh, selected as a finalist for uh, the, the uh, competition for, uh, in, at, in Philadelphia. That's right. And what's the driver, Victor, what's the driver for you to want to start your own firm? Well, one of the main drivers for me is just what I see being involved in the American Institute of Architects. Uh, it's kind of like the struggle that architects are going through uh, with clients in general, uh, mainly developers and investors, where it's really hard negotiating fees and uh, really having control of the design. So I was inspired by uh, uh, a man named Jonathan Siegel, who has developed a business uh, called Architect as Developer, where the architect basically has control of the, of the land, the construction, and the design. And I took that business concept and I've kind of made my own version of it. And uh, for me, that's going to allow architects to really have a larger role in the field and with design in general. And, and that's something I'm very excited about. Well, tell us. I'm excited to hear about it. Tell me about uh, how you've made it your own. Well, um, one, of the, one of the things that I feel is lacking in architecture is, uh, uh, is franchising. And also, I'm also excited about the concept of co-working that I, I see going on with companies like WeWork. Um, and uh, I also am looking for more ways to diversify the architect's uh, means of getting income. That way, architects can be more choosy on who they work with and have better leverage in negotiating design fees. And by having uh, a, a system that's, which, which is allowed to you by franchising, I take advantage of the fact that architects aren't really educated very well in the practice of business. Uh, schools don't teach us how to run a business. They teach us how to design. And that's why you have a lot of issues with uh, negotiation and just practice management in general. And I think that having a franchise set up, that kind of takes care of that and um, allows architects to focus on construction and design. Great. And so tell me a little bit about your business model. You say you were inspired by Jonathan Siegel. Absolutely. I just love everything he's doing. He's doing some great stuff down in San Diego. So how has that inspired you and how are you going to take that business model and make it your own? Well, the way that I, I'm going to make it my own is, I, first of all, is I'm going to take the same concept. Uh, I'm going to uh, allow architects to grow inside of it and then branch off. Because one of the things that I see a lot in firms, especially in my years, I've been working full time for about 13 years now. And I see a lot of talented architects basically break off and walk out the door. Sometimes it's because they want to design, they want to have control of the designs, or sometimes it's just because the person they're working for, which is usually a small or medium-sized firm, can't afford to keep them or compensate them the way they want to be compensated. So they go off and they start their own, and then I see them start and struggle because starting any business is, is very difficult. So, you know, with um, my concept, uh, basically, architects would grow in-house, and then when they're ready to start their own firm, the way I see it myself is kind of like somebody investing 
in another architect. Instead of letting them walk out the door, I say, hey, you know, I have experience. Let me help you make your firm successful. And I want an investment stake in your company. And I have everything set up infrastructure wise here. And I have a co-working space where you could start your firm that is an architect specific co-working space. And it's in-house only for my company. And it'll allow architects to grow their own identities, but still be attached to something larger that could give them a source of support for business. Great. So tell me a little bit more about the specifics of that. Um, well, in, with, in regards to Jonathan Siegel's concept, um, obviously, uh, they'll be focusing more on architecture and development versus basically not just uh, providing fees for uh, services, but also each architect will be investing in their own projects. You know, I'm looking to also capitalize on the market on the small residential market where you see a lot of house flipping going on and wholesaling and there's a whole market of people that are not even educated in architecture that are involved in that and making a lot of money and making a good lifestyle doing that. And I kind of see that I'm like, well, if somebody who doesn't have an architectural training can do that and be successful, I wonder how well an architect can actually handle that kind of, you know, um, business model. So, in this way, they, an architect diversifies his business model by investing his own prop, in his own properties, building them, um, and then also providing fees. And with the income coming from the residential properties, the commercial properties he owns, he'll also be able to uh, leverage that and be more um, picky about who he provides fees to. You know, so that would be the basic business model, and then you would duplicate that uh, within a franchise. And I would be teaching that business model to all of my uh, employees and potential architects who want to break off from doing traditional architecture and join building ingenuity. So so just to summarize, it sounds like uh, from my understanding, Victor, is that what you're looking at doing is taking something like the architecture as developer, the, the business model that Jonathan Siegel uses, and turning that into a franchise where you teach others how to do that and take a stake in their business or license, I guess, the business to them. Correct. Great. So what's, what's the first step that you see in, in bringing this about? Well, the first step is proving that it works. You know, obviously, right now, it's, it's an idea. So um, where I, I'm going to start the business model myself. I'm getting ready to buy property. And uh, I'm, I'm joint venturing with my parents. And we're going to buy property that I'm going to move into. I'm following all of the steps that Jonathan Siegel outlines in his program to the teeth. And uh, I'm going to do that. And on the side, I'm also, I also have some contracts for design services that I have going on. So I'm going to be juggling both my own investment property uh, that I already have a contractor selected. I have good connections here in South Florida. And then doing my own design services on the side. And the money I make from my design services is going to help fuel my investment projects. And I'm hoping that cycles and grows and obviously, as I start doing more design services and investing in bigger projects, I'm going to bring on staff and, um, and then grow them in the next few years. And, then, and I'm also going to look for talent, talented architects like myself who are ready to do the same business model I am and then, you know, negotiate and having them join my team. You know, obviously, I have to uh, grow my business to a point where people can believe that it's something that they can join. Mm hmm. Tell me about the project you're working on uh, as a JV with your parents. Well, right now it's it's kind of, it's very conceptual. We're looking to do a quadplex, you know. So we're currently searching for land, you know, and it's going to be a very modern design. Uh, I'm going to be one of the tenants, and I'm going to rent out the other three uh, units, and, and that's actually the the um, how you say the prototype of what I'm gonna have every architect who starts their firm with the building ingenuity start with is a quadplex that they move into. You know, um, being one of the tenants is just, uh, it's smart because you can get rid of your rent, you know, um, and that gives you a little bit more leverage with you, uh, throw, um, pursuing design, design fees when you don't have to worry about so many bills. And so why a, quad, a quadplex? Well, that was um, one of the prototypes. Jonathan Siegel and his program had a few prototypes um, that he felt that was good to start with. And he, he said duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes. You know, and obviously, as you grow, you can start doing multifamily. Um, but he has made his business real successful. So, you know, my idea is to copy and take his, 
take what he's teaching and make it work and then diversify from there. And how conceptual is this now? Do you have a budget figures for this quadplex? Are you looking at parcels of land? How far along the process are you? I have budget figures. Um, I'm designing the quadplex as we speak. And uh, my next step is to meet with my contractor contact and get some, you know, see if his uh, estimates are, are in line with my budget. I'm, I'm looking at possibly somewhere between seven, eight hundred thousand for construction cost. Um, you know, so uh, I think that's feasible. Um, you know, I'm going to find out when the contractor looks at it. I might have to uh, do some uh, value engineering. You know, so, um, but it's it's going to be a back and forth until it works out because obviously the numbers have to work out. And that's what makes this exciting for me. It, it's not just designing in, in, a, in a vacuum. You, you, this is going to make me a better architect. And I feel like it's going to make the architects that join my company a lot better when they're actually thinking about the, the cost, the construction all in one because they're going to be the architect, the contractor and the developer. Yep. So we're looking at a quadplex uh, estimated budget, say around eight hundred thousand. And did you do you have the parcel yet? I do not know. We're looking around. I have some potentials, but I have not acquired the parcel yet. What's the budget for the land? You know, uh, I don't want it to be more than a hundred grand. So it's it's going to be around there in the hundred grand ish. Um, so, and I'm hoping to, uh, you know, I haven't negotiated with the banks yet. So I'm hoping that as Jonathan Siegel has been able to do successfully is to, uh, use my design fees as Johnny bucks, which will bring that initial 20% deposit down, uh, to something more manageable. Yep. And how much would you be looking to, uh, put down on the project to get your, your initial financing? Oh, well, the 20% that's typically required by uh, banks to get a construction loan. Okay, well, let's talk about what it would take financially. Just some people might be curious. So in terms of purchasing the land, would that be, where do you get the cash for that? Well, you know, you obviously, you got to save up somehow. Uh, that's why I'm joint venturing with my parents because my parents have uh, have some cash saved up from their lifetime of working. You know, I have a little bit of cash. They have a little more cash. You know, um, and then also, you know, I'm hoping the Johnny Bucks come into play. But if the Johnny Bucks don't, uh, we have enough cash to make it work for the 20 percent. And then obviously I'll just end up paying myself back from the loan because that's the genius behind Jonathan Siegel's uh, concept is that your design, the design fees that would typically go out to an outside architect, an outside contractor now go into your pocket. And then that gets paid for by the tenant. Yep. So you, that's that's great because you end up. You never have to chase your design fees. They're there. You pay yourself. So regarding the acquisition of the land, how would that roll into the deal? Would you make that purchase and then go out for your your financing for the project once you had the land tied up? How do you see that happening? Well, that's one way to do it. Um, I've also researched and saw that banks will give you kind of like a, um, a grace period where you could roll the land purchase and all the other things as long as you have all your ducks in a row, you met with the contractor, you have your design, and you're taking a little bit of risk there because you're designing for a piece of land you don't own yet. You know, so but they give you a grace period of sixty days to do some, I guess what they call discovery, where you can go and find out if there's any issues with the land, you know, easements, um, infrastructure that, you know, might uh derail the deal. You have those sixty days to do that and then you put it into the bank loan and you tie the, the purchase of the land with everything. So it's a little bit more gamble and risk, but you know, there, there's options. You bet. And what's your timeline? When do you think realistically you'll be able to find a piece of land and start this process, really put some money down? Well, I'm actually, you know, right now I'm focused on the competition, um, the Charette Venture Group competition in Philadelphia, uh, which is in May. And when that finishes, I am then I'm going to start shift my focus to the uh, the investment project. So I'm looking to wrap up in the purchase of land and start construction probably in the fall. Great. And tell me tell me about the work that you're doing right now, Victor. Well, I currently work for a company called Styles, which is a major developer. Um, and I'm also, you know, kind of freelancing on the side with my company building ingenuity. Uh, and right now, I'm working with a developer to uh, design an apartment building, 20-unit apartment building down here in South Florida. Uh, that's my side project. Um, and then also during my full-time job, uh, I do uh, commercial 
and uh, and a lot of uh, office work uh, here in Fort Lauderdale. Very cool. Victor, sounds like you have some great stuff ahead of you and you're going to figure it out. We'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. I look forward to seeing how this goes for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So people who may want to get in contact with you, people who want to follow what you're doing, Victor, what's the best way to reach out and to connect with you? Uh, I would say you could go to my website. My website right now um, is very architecture design oriented because that's what I offer freelance wise, you know, but that's going to shift to more of an architect developer contractor look in the future. But you could go to uh, buildingenuity.com. That's my website. Or you can contact me at vcabondiaz at buildingenuity.com. Excellent. Well, Victor, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the Business of Architecture. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that's a wrap for another show about the Business of Architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.